got a skinny neck, well you're not alone. True story, when I was in early high school, me and my friend were in the library trying to compare each other's height. I'm taller, no I'm taller. Really important stuff about life, you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of too close to call and we ended up getting the librarian involved. <laughs> I know, I must have been a cool kid in high school. Anyways, the library came to conclusion that I was the taller one, but not so fast. She said that I was the taller one because I had more of a pencil neck. Whereas my friend had more of a football neck. Therefore, I had an extra couple millimeters on him because I had a long skinny neck, like a long skinny derpy dinosaur looking. Anyways, it was a bittersweet moment, mostly bitter. But what I'm trying to say ultimately is that most of my life I actually had a naturally skinny neck. That's just kind of like the genetics that I had. Let's make a short story long. So at the time I was really getting into training and most of the training I was doing back in the day in early high school was a lot of weight training combined with running. However, towards the end of high school, maybe out of hormones or just weird high school urges, I wanted to learn to spin on my head. I'm serious. So I saw this video on early YouTube with these breakers, people break dancing or b-boying, having a competition. They were spinning on their head and I was like, that is the freaking coolest thing I've ever seen and I wanted to learn that. So I literally spent up to two hours a day, six days a week, trying to spin on my head. I started with headstands and then I started turning. Now it wasn't until I was able to transition from just standing on my head to starting to turn into the head spin where all of a sudden I noticed my neck size just blew up. Like I remember coming back from winter break and my neck was literally rivaling the football players who, you know, were now in the off season. I'm like, bro, Mr. Steal your girl. Okay, yeah, I was still kind of a weirdo, still kind of am, don't really care. The fact is, my neck blew up from this type of training. Problem with that was, eventually, all of my hair started to fall out right here on the top of my head from essentially chafing with the earth for two hours a day, six days a week. I have one of my very first spin casts right here, and as you can see, this protective mesh right here burned right off. Yeah, there's a hole in there because uh, I've been on it so much. But I had to keep training. I ended up doing a few like strange hacks that I've made in way older videos. And long story short, by the time I was able to come up with a hack to redirect the pressure around the bald spot, it gave the bald spot enough time for the hair to grow back. And honestly, I think it actually grew back in that developing bald spot a lot thicker now, which is just a whole nother crazy topic to explore. Blah. But what I'm getting at is this type of training for this amount of time, this frequently, is very, very brutal and very, very tasking on the body. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend this training to someone who just wants to grow a bigger, stronger neck. No. But the takeaway point from this topic is the dynamic tension that is put on the neck for time. So remember that concept because that's going to go into my recommendations at the end of this for growing a bigger, stronger neck. Now I eventually got into other forms of breaking, doing power moves, doing other movements, very similar with all these movements while they weren't directly on the head all the time, there was still a lot of dynamic force, a lot of fighting gravity and changing ranges of motion all over the place, you know, while you have to concentrate and hold your head still. And you guys, if you've been watching this channel for many years, you might have noticed like in the 2016, 17, 18 era, you can see in a lot of videos, my neck looks looks pretty darn huge and pretty darn strong. It's just like, dude, you have a strong neck. I'm telling you though, early high school, it was like half the size, I'm not even joking. Now, as you guys know what happened in 2020, a lot of the gyms closed down and whatnot. So I kind of took a break from all of this breaking or all these power moves that I was doing. And then I started to get into running. And when I was doing a lot of just running and just kind of some light calisthenics and weight training, just kind of trying to find myself. And well, what happened is I started to notice my neck actually getting skinnier again, right? So I started to lose all that size that I had from my breaking days and it was starting to shrink back down into my pencil neck days. So now as you guys have probably seen a lot of the challenge videos that I've done over the past one two years had to do with the neck increasing neck strength neck size because you know that's something I just found really important and in doing these exploration experiments we did a lot of different neck training exercises regimens from the NFL neck exercises video to the formula one neck training video I learned a lot about how at least my neck responds to certain types of training and what works the best. And it all really does go back to that first time my neck blew up, it blew up in a good way, from learning how to do head spins. For me, what I have found that has just been 
simply the most effective is just utilizing the concept of simple time under tension. So at the end of my training session, two to four times a week, really depending, what I end up doing is I get on the ground and I start with a warm up. I start by laying down flat on my back, lifting my head off the ground and doing these head turns, 75 reps. It's just such a simple, effective, great warm up, no equipment required, you know what I mean? By rep 75, it's burning and you can feel it activating. You don't have to do any like crazy thing like that, okay? Just like simple, head turns nice and easy keeping that head off the ground so you're getting that time under tension by keeping that head off the ground and you're getting a little bit of range of motion here just helping warm everything up then after this you flip around to your back lift your head back up off the ground good form and you just do head turn side to side once again you don't need to try to turn that chin all the way over and like look behind you okay just nice and easy head turns you'll feel that tension right here on the back over time when you get towards rep 75. So we get that isometric time under tension by lifting the neck off the ground and holding it there, but we also get a little bit of dynamic motion moving back and forth, both on the front and the back. After 75 reps on each side, I like to go over to my pole. It's, it's not for dancing, it's a cable machine. And I take a resistance band, I put it around the pole. Now something I like to do is I actually like to keep the resistance band level with where it's gonna go around my head, okay? I don't like to have the resistance band up high or down low. I don't know if it's that serious, but the way I think about it is I don't wanna have any like compression forces going either way, right? I wanna just keep it even on my head. What I do then is I literally just step out from the pole with the resistance band and just apply light tension to the neck going forward, really utilizing the sternocleidomastoid right here in the front, and I can just hold it there for time. I like to go for about a minute, two minutes, depending on how strong I feel. I don't go to total failure, I go to probably an RPE of like eight. Seriously, just eight, that's about it. Then I do the back, very important. I feel like a lot of people start messing up when they go to the back. Just be sure you're standing up straight before you go to it, and think light tension at first. At least that's what I do. I don't like really step out to where it's gonna like yank me and like boom on the pole. Light tension, all right? It's gonna be that time under tension that really matters. It should feel kind of easy at first, and then when it gets to about 60 seconds or so, that's when it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I can really feel those muscles working, all right? You don't wanna be like fighting it, fighting it, fighting it, fighting it, you get to 10 seconds and it's like, you know what I mean? Go for more time under tension rather than a shorter time under tension and just a lot of weight. I think that's probably safer, and in my case, I feel like it really works well for hypertrophy. Then I do go to side to side and I do each side. Now when I started throwing this routine in a couple months ago, I was doing three sets of this. So I do 75, 75, you know, about one minute on each quadrant of the neck. And then I do that again two more times. However, recently over the past weeks, you know, I've just been kind of messing around on the trampoline again. And I've noticed a lot of dynamic force from just training on the trampoline. And I feel like, you know, I gotta fight the force from doing all those flips. And I feel like, yeah, I'm definitely getting some neck stimulation there. So now over these past couple of weeks, I've only really been doing this exercise for about one set. But literally that's it guys, those two simple things right there. And I feel like my neck has actually gotten bigger and it has gotten stronger. And I feel like my posture is so much better working at my computer, sitting around the house, standing up, walking around, saying hi to my friends. With that being said, if you're interested in getting in shape with your body weight, check out my body weight training program, Bodyweight Beast 2.0 on OnlyKindsFitness.com. Stay tuned for tomorrow we have a one week challenge coming out that I think you're all gonna like. It has been requested, the occlusion band video. Interesting video. And with that being said, stay tuned for next week. I just have to announce this, next Saturday, the next one, what day is that? Saturday the 13th. We have a huge video coming out, an experiment that I am so excited to release. I think it's gonna change the game. I don't wanna give any more clues away. I hope you all are enjoying these videos and I hope you're all enjoying the challenge videos. More videos coming out. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned, don't forget to subscribe, turn those notifications on. Hope you all have a great day. Peace, I will see you all in the next video. <laughs>